if my baby doesn't get the blood that she needs, the adult blood from people who donate, she doesn't survive. Not even 24 hours after I'd given birth, my baby was basically taken away from me <laughs> um, and put into the special care nursery at Budrum. And the nurses and everyone, our obstetrician and pediatricians there were just incredible. Um, you know, in babies when they're born, if you, if you just attack my she's headphones. She's so unprofessional. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, Luna, and so, we're trying to talk. We're trying to talk about you, mate. <laughs> Her jaundice levels were dangerously high, so she was under blue lights. And, and that's when we knew that there was a problem there. From then on, I guess, six weeks of a lot of anxiety. Well, nugs, she's you just were... so scared. <laughs> yeah, lots of late night phone calls between my little mate and I. <laughs> going, I don't know what's going on. Like, this is really hard. Um, we spent 10 days under lights um, with Luna as well. We didn't really know what was going on, and it took a while for the do- diagnosis to come through that the reason that she was so yellow and so jaundiced is her blood was breaking down and it meant that it was spitting out bilirubin which was making her yellow the stuff that makes you yeah jaundice Mm, yeah hereditary spherocytosis is her blood condition and neither uh, one of us is going to attempt to say that how rare is that i'm glad you did it's pretty rare but just an update uh, luna now has the edge of the microphone in her mouth i wouldn't be doing that mate Uh, yeah Um, so if ash drifts off you'll know it's happened (laughs) <laughs> Spherocytosis is when their red blood cells, some of them are slightly misshaped. Luna, I'm going to need the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> Just so unprofessional. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. I can't believe we're doing all this to help this person. Help us help you, Luna. <laughs> it's, so, it's, so it's hilarious. <laughs> so anyway, so her, some of her red blood cells are misshaped. <laughs> And, and when her red blood cells break down, uh, her spleen crushes them down and then it causes anemia. So the less red blood cells mm. she has, obviously, uh, the more blood that she needs put back into her body. And is this something that she'll grow out of? No. If this is still happening, maybe when she's the age of five or depending on the severity of her HS, we don't actually know that yet. Yeah. Um, she will then need to get her spleen removed. Right. So uh, she had her seventh blood transfusion last week. You're on this journey, this kind of these last sort of eight and a half months, you've obviously met an enormous amount of people. You just said you're in a Facebook group. As, as I know from stuff with my daughter Lola, you end up just sort of meeting people on these yeah. journeys in hospitals, at specialists, whatever it is. And you've learned, and it's just sort of really crystallized for you, just how important what we're doing here with Bloody Oath, mm. just how vitally important these blood donations are. It, it, it hurts me to say it, but at the end of the day, it's actually the reality. If my baby doesn't get the blood that she needs, the adult blood from people who donate, she doesn't survive.